One of the benefits of using a fixed release distro like Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, or any of their derivatives is stability. One of the downsides could be that some people find the software packages get a little stale after a while before the next update, but there's a solution for that. So let's check it out. Hello, it's Dorian. Thank you for tuning into Dot Slash. So I'm using Debian 10, as you know, if you're subscribed, and this is now my main system. Some people complain that the packages get a little stale and they want the newer versions, so they go to a rolling release. There is nothing wrong with rolling release. I've used rolling release for a long time, but I had to switch to fixed release, as I explained in my last video. And I've been really happy with it. I'm happy with the package versions, but sometimes you want something new for one reason or another, maybe a feature you're missing or some type of incompatibility with something. So I'm gonna show you a couple of options here. And this works in Debian and Ubuntu. I'm pretty sure all the others provided they do have their own backports repo. Now you can just look up your own distribution and backports to find the instructions on how to do it. You can see on the Debian backports page, it explains what it is. It's basically packages that are built for the next version of Debian. So the current version I'm using now is 10, codename Buster. And the next is Debian 11, codename Bullseye, which is also the testing repo. So what Debian does is they recompile the programs that they're working on in testing on the current stable version so that you can install it on the stable version. Now, I wouldn't go as far as installing like GNOME shell or like an entire desktop environment. Maybe you can. I haven't tried it. I think I will try it in a VM just because I'm curious. But if you want something like the kernel or you want something like LibreOffice, it's totally easy. And I'll show you that right now. Now, one way you can do it if you're using GNOME or if you just happen to have this in your desktop environment, the software and updates. There's a tab called other software where you can just add the app line that I'm going to show you. But just so that this works for everyone, I'm going to do it in the terminal. I also just prefer doing things in the terminal, as you should know if you watch my videos. So I'm just going to edit it with a sudo nano etc apt sources.list. This is where the package manager will look to get different things. So just go down to the bottom and add another line, deb http deb.debian.org slash debian and you're going to do buster dash backports main you can also add contrib and non-free if you don't mind using non-free stuff i don't so it's good if you don't want non-free just don't add it now if you happen to still be using stretch for some reason debian 9 you can just change this to say stretch backports instead and if you're watching this video right now and you're using bullseye, well, you just do bullseye backports and it just keeps going on and on and on. So do control O enter, control X to save, and then sudo apt update. Now you shouldn't get any errors here. If you do get any errors, go back in and just check the spelling, check the URL, make sure it's good because it does work. Now, as you can see here, I'm using LibreOffice. It's 6.1, yeah, 6.1.5.2. And let's just say I want LibreOffice 7. I want the newest one or whatever program you're using, Krita, GIMP, it, it doesn't matter. Now, I believe you can just overwrite with backports the current version, but I wouldn't, I don't recommend it because it has a lot of dependencies as well. So what I recommend, and this is what I do, is just sudo apt remove LibreOffice star. I just do the star because there's tons of LibreOffice stuff. So go ahead and remove it. And then after this is done, you're also going to do an auto remove. Auto remove is going to get rid of all the dependencies that LibreOffice was using because when you install from backports, it's going to pull in all the dependencies from backports as well that the new backport version requires, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we're all done. So I'm gonna do an apt install. I'm gonna do a dash T. And now this switch is telling apt where to get the program you're asking for. So I want it from Buster Backports. 
This is what you typed in the sources.list file earlier. And I'm gonna go LibreOffice. You can also add more things here if you want, Firefox, Genie, like anything that you want, you can install, it'll pull it all at the same time. Go like this, yes. And now it's gonna pull LibreOffice and all its dependencies from backports. One thing to note while I'm waiting for this here is the backports site on the Debian website, it states that there could be incompatibilities between programs. So you'll you'll want to be careful, you know, just try it out. If, if you have all kinds of issues, I haven't had any issues so far, but if you have any problems, you'll have to just uninstall it, go back with the old, and then another alternative is to use flat packs as well. But like I said, I haven't had any issues. They do put that warning there though. So if your expectations are it's going to work perfect and it doesn't, well, they warned you. Okay, so now LibreOffice is installed from the backports. So if I fire it up, I get all the new welcome stuff because it's new, but you can see this is LibreOffice 7 and this is running from the repos. It'll get updates and I didn't have to resort to flat packs or snaps just in case you're not a fan. But as I said, if you have any issues with it, you can just do a remove again. LibreOffice, just like I did before with the star. I always do it with LibreOffice and then do an auto remove. And then you're just going to do a regular apt install LibreOffice. And this will install the regular 6.1 version again that was there before. So just don't put the dash T buster backports and it'll install the regular version. But if for some reason it doesn't work and you really want to use the newest version, Flatpak is also an option. So Flatpak install LibreOffice. If you've installed Flatpak, if you haven't installed it yet, just go to flathub.org and click on your distribution. It'll tell you how to set it up and then you're good to go. So this will install Flatpak, but I'm not going to do it because that's not what this video is about. It is an option. And now as for the kernel, let's say you want to update to the newest kernel. If you don't need to, you don't have to. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, if you have a, a new, very recent system and for some reason the Wi-Fi doesn't work or something's not working properly, yes, maybe you want to upgrade to the newest kernel or maybe you want to see if there's any performance advantages to upgrading to the newest kernel. You can do that as well. So we're going to do sudo app install from buster backports and we're going to install linux image amd64 this is provided you are using a 64-bit amd or intel cpu if you're using something different you're gonna have to figure out what you need but for 99 percent of people this will work you're also going to want to upgrade the firmware linux package and firmware linux non-free yeah, that doesn't look very nice, but just here. All right, Linux non-free. I don't know if you're gonna need the non-free or not. It depends on your system. If you have it now, if you had to install it before, you're gonna wanna update this as well. Again, this is for some uh, Wi-Fi chipsets. Some, some pieces of hardware require the non-free firmware. Then just hit enter, go ahead and let it do its thing. And once it's done, give it a restart. Now, once you've restarted, you should be using the newest kernel and you can just check that with a quick uname dash a, and I'm using the 5.7 kernel. Normally Debian 10 uses kernel 4.19. It works fine for me. It always has worked, but I updated the kernel to 5.7. It works. I haven't had any issues, so I'm just going to keep it. If you have an issue in your grub menu, go down to advanced and then select the 4.19 kernel and it should boot up fine. But currently 5.7, I've run it on all my old machines as well. I haven't really heard of anyone having any major issues with it, so it should work just fine. If your grub menu doesn't come up, when you boot up your machine, hold down the left shift button and grub should come up and then you can select those options. Once you've been running 5.7 for a while, it's been stable, you haven't had any issues, you could do the auto remove and it'll remove the old kernel version. Just be very aware when you're doing the auto remove. So if you're doing other software, LibreOffice, whatever, like I just showed you, 
and you've already upgraded your kernel, it's gonna uninstall the old kernel version. So you might wanna do the kernel last. So this was just a quick how-to on how to do this. Again, most of the time, everyone's happy with the versions that are there. Some people just want the newer version for whatever reason. I'm just giving you an option. This is an alternative to using flat packs or snaps, and it works very well. It's been very stable for me. I will try installing a couple of desktop environments just to see how it works. I'll do it in a virtual machine just because I'm curious. I don't want to do it on hardware. But yeah, give it a shot. It works well. And like I said before, you could do it in Ubuntu, Mint, or any derivative of Debian or Ubuntu and so on. I hope you liked the video. If you did, click on like. Don't forget to share it on your social media. And don't forget to subscribe for more. You can support my channel over on patreon.com slash dorian.slash and you can follow me on Twitter at dorian.slash. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bash on.